Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and by the end of today's video you will know which armors are the best to use and how to get them across both class 5 and class 6 in patch 13.5. In this one we're using an excellent resource on the Tarkov.dev website which has some incredible lists of equipment with customizable fields making it very easy to compare all of these together. Before we continue, today's video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet and in particular the Ridge Ring. As well as their excellent wallet and key case selection that I'm usually showcasing, Ridge now has their series of men's rings too either for minimalist style or potentially even as an attractive modern wedding band. I have the burnt titanium version to show you here, but a number of the classic Ridge styles are available as well and they all look super cool. Ridge also have a new selection of silicone rings with a few different designs for when you're active and don't feel like wearing one of the regular ones. Now I know that rings are not for everybody and that is completely fair enough, but one of the best parts about the Ridge ring is that you can get two free exchanges in the same style in different sizes if your hands change, for example if you lose some weight or if you get really stacked in the gym. As usual, you can get the best offer using my link and code GigaRidge at the checkout to save 10% on your order and benefit from Ridge's lifetime warranty and the 99 day test drive applies here too as a risk-free trial. So if things don't work out, you can get your money back. So visit ridge.com forward slash GigaRidge for products meant to last a lifetime. So back to the armors. We're going to start at the top and work our way down through the protection levels, i.e. class six first with the highest effective durability. As a reminder, the in-game durability isn't enough to tell you how good an armor actually is. You need to take the material into account too, which is called the effective durability and is listed here as well. So starting off we have the Zabralo as you can see here. Now this Zabralo is accessible in three different places from three different barters but the best one is Mechanic 3 for a phased rate element and five control relays which comes out to about 370k. So Tarkov.dev actually tells you what the current price is based on the flea market at the moment which is pretty cool. This thing is obviously armor class 6 and is an absolute beast for protection. It is insane with an effective durability of 240 which is the highest in the game within this particular class anyway and that is because of its combined materials which takes the 120 and basically doubles it. Now as we probably know we have left arm, right arm, thorax and stomach so it protects the entirety of the upper body obviously excluding the head but the price that we pay for this is 20 kilograms in weight and some of the worst debuffs that we've got in the game. The debuffs were decreased quite a bit most of these debuffs were basically halved because this used to be about 34 but now the move speed is still minus 17% which is quite a lot minus 10% on turn rate which messes with your muscle memory and minus 13 on ergonomics so it's not the easiest one to run but if you do want massive protection then this is the boy. Where I tend to use this is on factory getting specific quests done to make sure that I basically don't die and I pair this either with an Altin or with a Tegila face shield to ensure that I don't just get head taps and the Zabralo is untouched. Next we have the NFM Thor integrated carrier. This is basically a weaker version of the Zabralo. Now unfortunately it costs 440,000 rubles on Ragman 4 and you have to complete this task the Blood of War part 3. This is unfortunate because basically it's harder to get than the Zabralo, costs more than the Zabralo, and is worse than the Zabralo. As you can see, it's still class 6, it's got the same armor hitboxes, but it has a bit less effective durability, the same repairability, and the only thing that it's really got going for it is the very slight decrease in weight and slight decrease in the stat debuffs that we have here. But I just don't really think that it's worth using, you basically just want a Zabralo. So if you pick one up, then maybe you can run it. It's not really worth selling back to Ragman to try and buy a Zabralo instead, but if you're starting afresh, I just go with the Zabralo. The next one is the Slick. There are three types. There's the Olive, the Tan, and the Black version. They're all the same in terms of their stats. There's no difference whatsoever, but you can only buy the Black one on Ragman 4. Now, because it takes three high common trooper armors, this has driven the price of the trooper up crazy. So as you can see at the moment, I don't know what it is in game sometimes. So Tarkov.dev takes the flea market prices at the moment. There is also an option to do average on certain pages, but I think this one just takes the current prices right now. So these can fluctuate around, so it's worth looking in game yourself, but it gives you a rough estimate anyway. So if the high common troop at the moment is worth 250K, then well, it basically means that if you're buying all these components, a slick is a million rubles from Ragman. Now these are usually sold out anyway, because they're one of the most sought after items in the game. And at the highest levels of play, money doesn't really matter too much. So some people will still go and buy these, but for the ordinary player, this is probably a little bit too much to be paying for your armor. In terms of protection, it's quite a bit different to something like the Zabralo or the Thor because it is thorax only. Now this is nowhere near as big of a problem as it used to be because of the way that the black limb changes have occurred. Stomach used to multiply the damage received once it was blacked by one and a half times. But this doesn't happen anymore, it only multiplies it by 1.05 so it only does an extra 5% damage and distributes that across the body. This basically means that having the stomach open really isn't anywhere near as big of a deal as it used to be so this has actually indirectly buffed all of the thorax only armors. Durability wise obviously it doesn't come anywhere near close to the Zabralo but at 114 and class 6 it's actually pretty good. It has crazy repairability because it is a steel armor type 
It's fairly light and it has amazing stats. So this is the reason why the chads love it, but obviously it's very, very pricey. The hex grid is basically just an upgraded version of the slick. It has a class six as well. And with 111 effective durability, it's very close to the slick. It repairs really well because this one is polymer. Both steel and polymer are the best for repairing. And this one is polymer, whereas the slick is steel. They both repair almost back to full every time that you get them back and manage to actually put them through the repair process. The only thing about the hex grid is that it is two kilograms lighter and it gives you a slightly better move speed, but it's finding rate only, so you're not going to be able to get access to this very easily. The next one is the Cry Precision AVS Plate Carrier, or the Tagilla Armor, as people call it, or the Tagilla Rig. This is Class 6 as well, and Thorax only, so it benefits from the same black limb stuff that we've had this wipe, like the Slick and the Hex. It is slightly lower durability again at 109, very, very close to the other two. But this has amazing stats as well, 3% on move speed. It does suffer a little bit on ergonomics, but it doesn't matter too much. And the weight is almost the same as the hex grid. So this is actually really, really cool. The one downside with the Tequila rig actually is the fact that it is a rig and you can't pair it with anything else. So you're kind of stuck with whatever the slots are. And the slots aren't all that great. It's six two by ones, which is definitely usable. I think that's fine. It does limit your build a little bit. You can't use any drum magazines. You can't use any 40 rounders, things like that. So slightly limited, but I think it's still very, very good. And the best part about this is that it is actually sort of accessible a bit more than some of these other things like the hex grid because you do find it on Tagilla. and Tagilla is one of the easiest bosses to at least find not necessarily kill but at least find because you can spam a lot of factory raids compared to say you know woods or something next one down we have the juk 6a this is technically one of the best armors in class 6 because it covers both thorax and stomach it's the only one that does precisely that all the others are thorax only or thorax stomach and both arms now this one has a slightly lower durability again at effective 93 which is all right the repair Repairability of 80 is the reason why it's not very good. This is a ceramic armor type, which as we know, typically in Tarkov doesn't repair very well. So once you have this damage, it's very difficult to want to really use it again. At class six, you probably can, because even if you go back to 80% of its max durability on the first repair, it's still better than the class five. You remember the rule of thumb is that an armor acts like the class below when it's at 50% of its max durability. Roughly speaking, anyway, that gives you enough to go off. But the issue then with the Zhuk is that because you can't buy it and you can't craft it, you just have to to find it in raid is kind of one and done which is a little bit of a shame because it is actually really quite good doesn't weigh that much nine kilos is okay and the stat debuffs are not that bad either so this is actually a good armor but just, you just never see it because you just can't get it any other way outside of you know stashes and that kind of thing finally for class six the tasmanian tiger sk plate this is the newest addition within class six and this one's interesting because the effective durability jumps down from 93 down to 50 so it is almost half of the juk 6a and comparing this to the 240 of the zabrali you can see it's very very low in comparison the thing that you have to remember about the sk plate is that first it's very very cheap not that many people actually have ragman for and so the loot lords and the bear buddies are pretty cheap on the flea because basically they're used for kappa and not really anything else so as you can see often you can get this for 140,000 rubles which is cheaper than most of the budget armors that you get in class 5 even so this thing is insanely good for that it also is incredibly light at seven and a half kilos the debuffs are basically non-existent two one and minus three which is incredibly good but again this one has the same downside as the tequila rig is that you just have to use what it is in terms of space you can't add anything else to it and this one is four two by one so it's even more limited than the tequila rig you basically want to be using 60 rounders with this thing because you just can't fit anything else in your rig you have such limited space with this one in terms of protectiveness some people do give it a bad rap i think so long as you use it in the right way it's fine you just have to remember that once you get shot three or four times it'll go to zero very quickly and then won't protect you at all anymore but it does bear remembering that against something like 762 by 39 bp which is an end game round it requires four shots to kill you in this this is because bullet one gets absorbed, bullet two gets absorbed, and the blunt damage is extremely low. Bullet three typically will penetrate and it will go through, but because the blunt damage was so low on the first two shots, it actually can't take down your thorax, even though it automatically penetrates. So it takes the fourth bullet in order to actually kill you. This is very, very strong. Taking four rounds from BP to die is a lot, especially when you include misses, arm shots, stomach shots, and all that kind of stuff. So this is really good. This is why the TTSK is so good. It protects you against M80, M62, BP, all sorts of things. Obviously, there are some bullets like BT for 762 by 54 SMB, which will just go straight through. Same thing with M61. But against the vast majority of bullets, it'll at least stop you dying in that initial spray and allow you to have some kind of counterplay. After that, it probably is zero. So you really want to get out. I wouldn't use this on a map like Streets where you're in for the long haul. And next up, we're into the class fives and starting with the one with the highest durability. This is the Fort Redoute T5. And this is often called the Samurai Armor because of the way that it looks. This has 240 effective durability, the same as the Zabralo. The thing to remember though, is that 200 
240 effective durability doesn't go as far in tier 5 or class 5 as it does in class 6 because class 6 actually reduces incoming damage more than class 5 does so they're not quite the same either way 240 is still an enormous amount this thing costs about 210,000 rubles from Ragman 4. It's on a barter only, so it's six gas masks and two power cords, and you have to complete Supervisor before you can get access to this on Ragman. But once you do, you can buy this thing, and it is pretty good. It's not as heavy as the Zabralo 16.5. You still are almost certainly going to be overweight with it, and the debuffs are about the same, actually. 18% move speed is actually worse than Zabralo, interestingly. But the turn rate is slightly lower, and the ergonomics debuff is slightly lower as well. So if you're comfortable with some of these debuffs, then it can be all right. Sometimes you can mitigate this with things like Meldonin, same for the Zabralo too, but it's very, very good. The only issue that I have with these class 5 ones is that ammos like 7.62 BP will actually go straight through this pretty much immediately. So if somebody's using endgame ammo, it doesn't really make a difference whether you've got a Reduke T5 on or a Corund, which is a little bit of a shame and the reason why, in my opinion, the Class 6s have that little bit of a step up. If you're using the Reduke T5 and it costs 310k, I feel like you're probably just better off just spending money and paying for the Zabralo instead for that Class 6 protection. Next up, we have the Gen 4 Full Protection. This is the one with both arms, thorax, and stomach. This is about 360k because it is three bronze lions from Ragman 4, and you have to do hot delivery for this as well. Again, I think this is a little bit too much. 17 kilos, which is higher than the Fort Reduct, which is interesting. The debuffs are a little bit more manageable, but again, I think I'd just buy the Zabralo for this one, honestly. Now, next we have the SNS Precision Plate Frame. This is the Goons Edition. You can only get it from the Goons, and this specific one is from Big Pipe. This is his rig. It is Thorax only, and this is one of the best armors in the entire game. 188 durability for a class 5, but Thorax only. It is incredibly light, 6.4 kilos, and almost non-existent debuffs. It's really, really quite good. The only issue with this one is the internal space is a little bit limited. It is 5 2 by one Again, a kind of a bit like the Turgilla one and the Tasmanian Tiger SK. So you're kind of stuck with it, but this is the reason why it is super light, I imagine, and it's incredibly repairable too. So this one is really good. You obviously have to kill Big Pipe to get it or somebody that's killed Big Pipe, but it is one of the best class 5 armors available. I think that makes sense given that it's on the goons. After this, we have a staple of the heavy class 5. This is the Fort Redoute M, which is one of my favorites. This is accessible at level 3 Ragman. There's also a barter here as well. I think this is only showing us the cheapest one in inverted commas, although I think the barter is normally much cheaper than this, at sometimes even about 180k, which is pretty cool. But for 230,000, you can certainly buy it at Ragman level 3. It's thorax and stomach, so no funny arms business going on, which is pretty cool. And this one did get buffed like two patches ago or something, so now it has 160 effective durability, which is very good. It's still on the upper end in terms of weight. 13.5 isn't crazy, but if you don't have that higher strength, it's very difficult to be underweight with this. I mean, especially for me, my strength is around 20 and I really struggle with it. It's almost impossible unless I go with everything else of super light kit, like an MP7 and a really light rig and no helmet, that kind of thing. It's very hard to stay under the weight threshold because for most people, it's under 30 kilos. So this is nearly 50% of the entire thing. Despite that, the debuffs actually aren't that bad. 6% 6% for such a heavy armor really isn't too terrible. But one of the best parts about this is the barter. The barter on the Redoute M is awesome. There's a trick that you can use to get the books. So there's two antique books, two Bake Easy books, and then there's four tech manuals. And what you could do for the tech manuals is you can go to visit Fence, and on Fence, they are 5K. Normally on the fleet, these are somewhere between 15 and 20K, so it could potentially cost you 80,000 rubles, but on Fence, they could be five. So they're 20 instead, which that shaves about 60K off the price, which is insane. This means that if you're using the two antique books at 40K each, that's 80. And then you've got the two Bake Easy books at about 30k each, that's 60, so that takes you to 140. And then with the books off fence, that makes it 160. This is really, really good value for what it is. It is a bit of a pain to fight overweight, unfortunately, but if you can manage that, it's a very, very good armor. Next up, we have the Cry Precision CPC Plate Carrier. This is the Goons Edition as well, and this is the one on Knight. Again, this is very good, 150 effective durability, not quite as good as the SNS Precision with 9.6 kilograms, non-existent debuffs as well which is great but this one has a really nice internal space this is the best part about this one and the reason why it could potentially be better than the big pipe one even though stats wise it's actually not as good if we go and have a look at what this thing actually has inside you've got two three by ones and you've got six one by twos as well which is really decent this is much better than the big pipe version so if you need the bigger space then it's one to look out for but again you're gonna have to kill knight to get it so not really in general circulation the gen 4 body armor assault kit this is the one in the middle this one's weird because you can't get access to it anywhere there's no craft for it there's no trade there's no barter there's nothing you could do from the traders you just have to find it in raid 
This has both arms, thorax and stomach like the predecessor, but it doesn't have quite as much effective durability at 136. The debuffs are toned down though and it doesn't weigh quite as much either. If you find this one, it can be kind of good to use. It's still a bit heavy, so you will struggle a little, but I just don't really see this one. I think you get one as a quest reward and that's basically it. Like it's the only one that I see most wipes these days. After this, with very similar effective durability at 133, we have the Ars Armor CPC Mod 1. A lot of people just call it the AA CPC because that's what it says on the actual icon when you have it in your stash. This used to be one of the favorite rigs in the game. You have to complete long blind, which is still the case where you have to kill PMCs inside the mall. You have to be quite a high level, level 45 to actually get access to the quest. So not that many people actually get there. It used to have a cracking barter, but now it's moonshine, which is a little bit troubling. There's the reason why it now costs about 350,000 rubles, because moonshines typically sell for about 270 to 280k in the late game, because people are using them to farm streamer items and other high-end guns in their scav junk box. So this one's now quite expensive. However, it is probably the best class 5 armor that you can get access to that is really light. 8.5 kilos, non-existent debuffs and decent effective durability. Thorax only, which as we said, is actually not a problem now. So this has actually become better. So it's really the contender between the Fort Redoute and the AACPC with both of them being kind of different. You know, they're, they're different things. This one's much heavier and gives you a bit more protection, but it, you suffer a little bit for it. This one, you're basically unencumbered and it doesn't hold you down as much, but you get a little bit less protection for it. And nothing on the stomach obviously. The CPC is really good on storage. It has two 3x1s and it has a 2x2 two two as well which is awesome. So it's a great rig to just go in in the raid. It's very efficient. You can pack it down if you find someone else's armor so you can stack it inside your own thing. It means that people will obviously take it quite a lot if they actually come and find it on you. If they kill you because it's very efficient for them to take it in their own bags which is slightly unfortunate but if you're confident with your pvp which people typically are if you're level 45 and paying nearly 400,000 rubles for an armor then it can be a really good choice. Next, we have the 6B13 Modified Assault Armor, otherwise known as the Killer Armor. This is Class 5 as well. This is basically a slightly less protective but better version of the Redute M because it only weighs 7.5 kilograms with really low debuffs. You can only get it on Killer though, it's one of the better class 5 armors, but again, it's very limited. Next, we have the Gen 4 High Mobility Kit. This is the lightest of the three Gen 4s, and this one is on Ragman level 3 for 7 GP coins. Now, if you can snipe GP coins for about 25k, rather than this being 210,000 rubles, you can get this more like 175k, which is sounding a lot more reasonable, especially given that all of the armors have kind of gone up in price over the years. They used to be able to get a Karund, which we'll talk about in a moment. You used to be able to get that for something like 110,000 rubles. That's not the case anymore, and a lot of the other armors have gone up in price. Some of these have been like this for a long time, including this one for the Barter, and the same thing with the Redute M, and people never used to buy them. But as the other armors have kind of gone up around them, BSG just haven't touched these values, and they're actually starting to come into play. This one is not too bad. It's got decent effective durability. It's very similar to the Killer, actually, only a little bit less and it weighs 13 kilos, which again, is a bit heavy. It's a bit like the Fort Redoute M. The debuffs are quite low though, except for the turn rate. The turn rate of minus 8%, I find really off-putting because it screws with my muscle memory. I really hope the BSG do get rid of these eventually because they said they would quite a while ago now, but at the moment, this messes with me too much, so I don't really use it. But for the protection that it gives you, it is actually pretty decent. And it really does. Under 200k is kind of like bordering on the budget end of class 5. And it sounds unbelievable to say that these days, but it's very difficult to get a class 5 under about 150 at the moment. Speaking of armors that are not budget, we have the relatively new Hex Attack HPC, which is quite a good armor, actually. It's pretty decent. The only problem is... The barter just doesn't make any sense. It's four NFM Thors. Why would you be using four Thors to then get this? It doesn't make sense to buy them. It doesn't make sense to use the Thors and then have them zeroed and then use them in the barter. Plus there's a roller too. So it ends up being about 300,000 rubles. It's actually decent armor, relatively lightweight, decent stats, decent durability. It's just the barter sucks and just doesn't make any sense. So nobody really uses it unless you find it in the stash. The next one, the Tac Tech is kind of similar. This is like a downgraded version of the AACPC. This is on Ragman 3, but you have to have six neoprene masks and five GP5 gas masks for it. This ends up coming out at about 310,000 rubles as well, which is extremely expensive. And I think there are probably some better options. The effective durability is pretty good. The debuffs are really good. It doesn't weigh that much. The storage space inside the Tactech, the one saving grace for it is that it's unlikely to get looted as much as something else like the CPC because it's a big 4x4 four four square and it's not that efficient to stack into your own bags. So you're much more likely to get it back in insurance 
than you are with the AACPC. But people will still insurance for their own armor to take this if it's not zeroed probably. The one main advantage of the tactic obviously is that you don't have to do long line to get access to it. So if you really are desperate for a rig like this, it can be an option, but I think it's a little bit too much. Now the next one, the CQC Osprey Mark 4A plate carrier protection. There's two versions. There is the assault version, which is the class four and the protection version, which is class five. They're both very similarly named, so don't get them mixed up. This one is an interesting armor because it comes from Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper level four, and you have to complete Peacekeeping Mission, which is the one where you wear the blueberry helmet and the blueberry armor, and you have to kill 12 scavs on a bunch of different maps. This is actually purchased in cash from Peacekeeper. There's no barter. It costs about 210,000 rubles equivalent from him. If you're buying, obviously you have to spend dollars with him. And this one is a bit strange because it covers left arm, right arm, and thorax. I feel like this white, this could be quite good because of the aforementioned stomach things, the effective durability is not too bad. The stats are okay. The turn rate in particular is very low and the move speed is probably the worst one, which I feel like maybe I can deal with. The only issue is the weight is pretty high, which is kind of unfortunate, but the internal storage space is really good on this one and allows you to use 40 rounders if you're using the MTX or the M4 or something. So I'm actually quite keen to try this out again once I've completed Peacekeeping Mission, which I'm nearly done with, but I do think it might actually be a relatively decent option. It's not the cheapest of these class five rigs with slightly lower durability, but I feel like it could be kind of interesting given the black limb changes. Next, we have the Defender 2. People seem to really like the Defender 2, and I'm not entirely sure why. It is craft only. You do find it on Cultist and you find it in other places in Raid, but that's really the only source of it. The craft doesn't make any sense because it requires two Karuns to actually get it in the first place. So only if you've got Karuns that are really beaten up and smashed does it really make sense to run this at all. It's actually one of the lowest effective durability class fives. As you can see on the list, the only worst ones is the Gazelle, the Bagari, and the Karunt, which are kind of the entry level, like three budget versions. So I'm not sure why people like it so much. I think it's probably because the fact that it's steel and it repairs so well. Outside of this, it is heavy and the debuffs are kind of low. So it's sort of a mixed bag. It's, it's kind of in the middle. I think it's all right. I might use it if I have one, but I wouldn't go out of my way to find it. So into the final three, these are used a lot because they typically are the cheapest and the easiest to access. The first one is the Gazelle, which is on Ragman 3, you can barter for two golden neck chains and three cans of Magicka coffee, which makes it cost pretty much 160k almost all of the time. Golden neck chains are typically 40,000 and the Magicka coffee is about 20. You can get it less for this if you're checking the market and you're careful, but 160k is what you can expect to pay. Now, all of these are thorax and stomach, which is kind of good, and the effective durability does start to drop off quite a lot now down at 81, which is fine, but it does mean that even things that shouldn't really go through class five will start to shred you if they get enough hits on you. Things like 545 BT and stuff like that will be able to kill you if you let people just completely beam on you. The Gazelle is good because the weight is relatively low at 8.9 and the debuffs are low. This is my favorite for sort of semi-budget PvP in the late game. I think that the move speed penalty being low is actually really helpful and I like it for that. It's probably the least economic because of the ceramic armor class, which means that you sort of have to buy one every time it gets damaged, which is a little bit unfortunate, but when money is not so much of a problem in the late game, you can buy these relatively cheaply. You can buy a couple per reset. They're just a nice staple armor to have access to that performs decently well. The Bulgari, on the other hand, is actually quite a bit more expensive, especially as Kajuru is going up and up and up. There is a strange thing about opportunity cost here that some people get confused about usually, which is yes, you can craft the Kajuru's yourself and yes it costs 8k but you could have sold those Kajuras on the flea so you have to count that cost in what you're using for the rig because otherwise you're not really accounting for it fairly so on that basis the Bagari rig costs about 240,000. now it does have the rig with it you don't have to spend money on that like you would if you had the gazelle or the Karunt. and the internal rig space on the Bagari is really good it has a 2x2 and it's absolutely massive which is kind of nice Dorex and stomach again very similar durability to the gazelle the only downside is that it is 13 kilos which is also really heavy and hard to not be overweight with and the move speed is a little low but this is probably the best looting rig for budget in class 5 just because of the space in it it's really good on reserve if you want to hit sewer manhole because you don't need to take a massive bag you can store a lot in the actual rig itself and still fight if you want to be protected with class 5. Finally, we have the Karund, the entry level class five armor. And this is nice because it's found on Prapple 3. So you can get it pretty early in the progression. It costs four diaries. So right now it's 161K, but diaries do go down to 35,000, something like that. So you can get it for 140, it doesn't cost that much. The cash purchase is now a bit more for this than it used to be, actually quite a lot more. It's now nearly 180,000 rubles. But this is a decent option if you can get it on the cheap and you want something and you can't access anything else. This is normally why people use it because they can't access Ragman 3 yet and they have basically only the Karund or class 4s to contend with and they keep getting shredded by 855A1 and this might protect you from one bullet more. 
The effect of durability is only 68, which is a little bit of a shame, and the stat debuffs are kind of similar to the Bugari in many ways. So it is again entry level. With 9.8 kilos, you can actually sneak this underweight because you get another three kilograms of grace or so, which does allow you to do that, depending on the loadout. But I do actually like the Karant, especially if you're just running on a budget. If you have other options though, I think you're probably better off moving up the tiers, especially given you can get some of these other things a little bit cheaper than the Karun if you're trying, or at least at a very similar price. So in conclusion, what are the best armors that we could use in 13.5? I do like the Karund over all the other class 4s, just simply because of the high tier ammo floating around, things like M855A1 and M80 that will go straight through class 4 at the moment, but it will at least stop one of those, one or two of these high end rounds going through your body, and it gives you a little bit of leeway in order to fight back. The Bugari is really good for looting, but it's very very heavy, and the Gazelle is my favourite for cheap-ish PvP. If you've completed Peacekeeping Mission, the CQC Osprey could be kind of interesting because it stops your arms from getting blacked out while you're fighting, which should give you a little bit of an advantage. Outside of this, I do think all the others are kind of a bit too expensive. If you do like the Armoured Rigs, the CPC, if you complete Longline, can be kind of good. But the other one that I like is the Fort Redute M, with the barter using the little trick for the tech manuals to make this nice and cheap. This is actually a really good option, but you just have to try and work with the weight. After this, my favourites are, honestly, once you get to Ragman 4, I use the Tasmanian Tiger SK a lot because it's just extremely cheap and allows you to move around the map without being over encumbered all the time. And other than that, I genuinely think that the Zabralo is the best. I do really like the Zabralo. I think it's probably the best of the big armors. If you can pick the face array elements and the relays cheaply off the flea market, you can get this for around 350k, if not less. And I think it beats out pretty much all the other options in that particular category, simply because it is just so beefy. If you're going to be overweight, you may as well be overweight and have the highest durability pool that you have accessible to you. So next up, to beat these armors, go and check out my full guide on 13.5 ammunition. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons and have fun in your raids.